Hey guys, I'm here with my buddy Jake Hutton and he is gonna take me through some exercises that are gonna get me nice and warm for a workout. So the things that we like to focus on are rotator cuff, a lot of rotator cuffs, so rotator movement, external rotators primarily. And another one is gonna be your trap three or your low traps, some type of core activation. Then we'll work some glute activation and opening the hips up too in different ways that we'll show you right now. All right, so the first one we're gonna do is an external rotator off the knee. The setup here, you're gonna slide your heel pretty close to your butt. Just make sure that your arm's at a 90 degree angle, basically right ahead of you. And then notice how Brooke's looking straight ahead. This is gonna be kind of difficult for most people. She's super mobile. But what you wanna avoid is looking away and just opening up here. You wanna create tension in your shoulder. We're gonna do 10 reps with the four count lower. When you have an imbalance here, it's gonna be hard to stabilize. And the same thing goes for your jerk, overhead, all that stuff. So for this exercise, we usually do three rounds, each arm, 10 reps with a four count lower on each arm. All right, the next one's gonna be a Cuban press. Basically what you're gonna do is set up so you're at 90 degrees when you pull straight up to the top. Pause right here, rotate above your head, press it out over your head, come back down to the top of the head and then rotate down, just under control. So we usually do about 10 to 15 reps here. No particular tempo, but just take your time, pause at the chest, rotate, and then just make sure you're controlling it on the way down. Um, probably the biggest thing that we see people do wrong on this one is when they get to the top right here, they let their elbows drop when they're coming down like that, right? So you don't want to drop your elbows and press it because that's just releasing all the tension off your external rotators. And that's what we're trying to hit on this one. You're going to be surprised at how hard it is. So like most guys have a hard time with a 45 pound barbell. So if you've never done it, I would probably start with a trainer bar and, and then work your way up from there. The next two movements we're gonna cover are our favorite movements for your lower traps. We call it trap three. Basically, retract your scapula down and to the center, good. The first thing we're gonna go over is just an incline bench Y raise. Set up on the incline bench. Every rep, what you're gonna do is squeeze your shoulder blades down and in, good. And then from there, you're gonna raise up into a Y, flex your triceps the entire time, pause, and then control it back down. And then at the bottom, you'll let out, and then squeeze back down and in, good. Come up. Pause, and then come back down. So a one count pause at the bottom, reach all the way out, squeeze it back, make sure you're getting a lot of movement in your scapula. And we usually do about 10 reps on this one for three sets. All right, the next one's gonna be a trap three dowel press. So you're gonna set up on an incline bench. For most people, you can just use um, a PVC pipe or a wooden dowel for this one. Brooks is gonna use the training bar. So what you're gonna set up with the bar right under your chin, squeeze your shoulder blades down and back. And then from there, you're gonna press the bar out over your head and then come back down. So the biggest thing is to make sure you're really squeezing your shoulder blades down and back. That's really the position you should be in before you do any overhead press. This is a great one to activate before you do overhead pressing for the day. All right, we are gonna start warming up our core. So this exercise is called a landmine bar rotation. And if you don't have something to attach your bar to your rig um, and make this a little bit easier, you can actually just place the end of your barbell on the ground and use the floor. So he's gonna hold it out directly in front of him with his arms straight, and he's gonna make sure he tightens everything up as if he were in a plank position. So your glutes, your legs, your core, everything needs to be super tight all the way through your triceps and into your lats. And what he's gonna do is rotate the bar down to the side without moving his torso or without moving his hips. So what we don't wanna see is this collapse, like his core collapsing to the side to move with the weight. So this is a really good exercise for practicing getting really tight through your midline while also opening up some thoracic rotations. I recommend anywhere from 10 to 15 reps each side, three rounds. The next exercise we're gonna do is a plank. We'll start with a very simple plank and make it a little bit cooler. Am I doing it or are you? Okay. Probably work up to at least a minute before you move on to this harder version. But the thing is too, you want your back to be flat. So I like to try to think of like someone's pushing down in your back and you be resisting it, right? So you push into my hand and that's gonna be a good plank and you'll feel the activation there. But a bad plank is gonna be letting your core to sag and you want to avoid that. So as long as you can hold like a minute plank without your, your back sagging like this, then we'll move on to the harder version. The harder version is gonna be plank with some slides. So you're just gonna grab some carpet sliders, super cheap if your gym doesn't have them. Wouldn't be a bad idea just to go grab some because you can do a lot of stuff with these things. Put your toes on the slider. Start with super, super small movements and then you'll, you'll slide out and then come back. I mean, that was a pretty big movement for most people. They'd probably lose it right there. <laughs> okay, I have a smaller one. And that was good. 
I'm just saying, yeah, there you go. Most people want to start about right there. And then once you keep getting, if you feel good, then you can just keep working to go further out and further out. All right, so for the plank, we usually like to do about one minute. And once you feel like the plank's a little bit too easy, then you can move on to the plank with the slides. And for that one, we usually do three rounds of about 10 to 15 reps. So just slide in and out 10 to 15 times. Woo! All right guys, the next thing we're gonna do is a hip opener. And so one of our favorite ones for this one is this, we call it a reverse lunge and reach. So you're gonna use a carpet slider again and a PVC pipe. The closer you go, the more stretch you're gonna get in your side body at the bottom and more tension in the hip. So uh, on this movement, basically think of it like a single leg squat on the, the leg that you're gonna lunge down with. And with the other leg, you wanna try to keep your glute flexed and your leg straight the entire time, almost like you're doing the splits. Most people will not be able to get into this position. So this is, don't have this expectation right now. She's really flexible, <laughs> she can do the splits. If you can't do the splits, it's not gonna look like that. So for most people, your hands are probably gonna be a little bit wider and you'll go down, just try, try to keep it straight and then reach up and then come back up. If you're hypermobile, then you're gonna wanna bring your hands in and just get down as deep as you can. Keep your leg as straight as possible. Good. So really you're getting deep into the lunge hip, but this is what you're stretching right here. Is your side body into this hip right here. Just six reps on each leg. Go through it about three times, six reps each leg. All right, the next exercise, I am gonna go through the bulldog circuit. So while I do this, Jake is gonna explain to you what I'm doing. So we're gonna do four movements, and we usually go back and forth between legs, five reps each side. The one that everyone knows is peeing on a fire hydrant. The biggest thing to think about here is keeping your hips and your shoulders square to the ground and not really trying to open up your pelvis too much. Really cause a lot, of, put a lot of tension in your hip and then strain to get as high as possible, like really push into it. And then that's when you're gonna get the most activation on this one. The next one, is gonna be basically you're gonna kick straight back and then circle around up to your armpit and get it as high as possible, good. So the next one after that's gonna be reverse that. So you're gonna go straight out to the side and then you're gonna kick back and around. And the very last one, you're gonna kick your leg straight out to the side and then just move it up and down. So not only are you gonna be getting your hips on this one, opening up your hips, you're also gonna be working all the muscles there and working your glutes a little bit too, firing your glutes up on this one. The last thing we're working on today is to get our glutes activated. One of our favorite things to do here, because every CrossFit gym is gonna have some bands in it, you're just gonna attach that band to a rack, step into that band, and then put it right around your knee level. This is a super heavy band. Most people aren't gonna be able to do this. So the band that you're gonna wanna choose is one that you get in your normal squat stance and you can drive out and your knees are tracking right outside your big toe. And if you're not able to do that, if it's pulling you in, and that's too heavy. We don't want to spend a bunch of time in here. So make sure you can press out and sit down at the bottom. What I always like to have people do is put their hands on their butt and then just push out. Don't even go down yet. Just push out against the band. You feel your glutes turn on? Yes. So it just kind of gives them that mind muscle. All right, yeah, that's what I want. Knees are out, glutes are on. And then from there, you're going to sit down and do a squat. Pause at the bottom for a two count. One, two, drive out, and then come back up. Good. So really try to pull that band apart at the bottom. One, two, drive up. The next exercise for activating your glutes is a glute bridge. Heels close to your bum. There we go. And we're just gonna squeeze our glutes. Up and down. Hump in the air. <laughs> so you're gonna focus on driving your weight, driving through your heels, keeping your feet as close to your bum as you can, squeezing your butt at the top, and nice control lower. Yeah. We can do single leg glute bridge. It's gonna be definitely more of an advanced movement. Some of you probably will not be as flexible as Jake here, getting the foot all the way to the ceiling. There we go. You're gonna hold for one, a one or two count at the top and lower down. We'll do three sets of 10 to 15 reps. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so these are some of our favorite exercise. Obviously there are plenty more out there that you can choose from. Um, Choose one of each of these, or if you have the time, two of each, and just do a circuit, three rounds. All the reps were about 10 to 15 reps in each movement, and by the end of it, you should definitely be warm. Big thanks to Jake Hutton for walking me through these exercises. We are here at Fitness Culture. This is his new gym. I think you can get it done in 10 minutes. Yeah. You just do it every day. <laughs> All right. It's squeezing. Maybe your bus is so jacked that I can't tell it's going to be. I'm squeezing it. This is hard as I can. There you go. Now it's squeezing. <laughs>